Welcome back to TEC Tube. Today we're going to be talking about packaged rooftop units. Now you might think, why do we need to do a video on that? A packaged rooftop is just a furnace and an air conditioner all shoved in one box. And that's true, but things are a little bit different and they look a little bit different, so we want to talk about it anyway. So we're going to head up onto the roof and show you what a rooftop does. So here we are on top of the roof here at the North Aurora store for TEC and Excelsior. We're going to take a look at some of the components on this particular rooftop unit. This one's kind of nice. We're going to be a little spoiled today. It's got all the hinge type access that we would not have on a traditional unit, but we're kind of lazy and that's why we picked this one today. So we're just going to go through it section by section and kind of show you some of the stuff here. So let's start with the blower section here. So here we are in the blower section. As you can see, we have the actual uh, blower itself and the fan motor, right? Like we'd have on any piece of HVAC equipment. There's not gonna be a lot to look at on here. Uh, this is on a sled type scenario. Uh, when you first get it from the factory, there'll be shipping bolts on it that you'd have to remove. But other than that, things are pretty self-explanatory. Most rooftop units are gonna be belt driven. That's pretty common. There are some smaller units you can get with direct drive motors, but belt driven is going to be the standard thing, especially when you have a decent amount of ductwork like we have in this particular facility. Uh, with the pulley here, the pulley on the backside, the motor obviously drives the, pu the pulley, the pulley drives the belt, the belt drives the other pulley, which spins the motor. Uh, you will adjust these pulleys. Different size pulleys will give you different airflow. So when the system is first installed, you may have to change the pulleys or adjust them in order to get the rated airflow that you want for your specific application. This is kind of the blower section. You'll also from over here be able to see we have a few other components we can look at. This is the evaporator coil. All right, so just like with any split system, a package rooftop unit puts the split system and the blower section all in one box. So that's our evaporator coil over here. And here's our TXV, thermal expansion valve. All right, we have two circuits on this machine. So we have two compressors, two evaporator coils, two TXVs, two of everything in this particular case. And you can also see up here we have our pressure sensor. That is utilized in conjunction with our heating section for, for when we uh, fire off our burner. So speaking of the heating section, let's take a look at that. For those of you guys that have been on a roof before, you know that this is significantly faster than if I had to take out like 14 nuts. All right, so this is our burner section. Uh, as you expect, we got a burner in here, right? And obviously the gas is gonna flow through this way. Uh, we have typical components that you're used to seeing. If you, have, if you don't have a lot of experience with gas heating, take a look at our two furnace videos so you can see all the components of a furnace and the sequence of operation. Because guess what? A rooftop is gonna be the exact same way, right? Same, same components, same sequence, just everything's a little bit bigger on a rooftop. All right, so here's our gas coming into the building, or into the, excuse me, into the rooftop unit, going through our gas valve here. That gas gets supplied to this header that then allows gas to flow through each individual burner. We have a um, ignition system on here, so we can light the flame. We got flame proving devices back here. We have rollout switches, right? So the same kind of stuff we had previously. In this case, for a lot of rooftops, it's driven off of a circuit board that checks all those safeties and then allows the system to operate if all the safeties are met. And of course, we have our inducer motor that's gonna pull air through the heat exchanger system and then exhaust it out here and out the front of this particular cabinet. So, typical gas burner setup like you have on most HVAC equipment. On this side over here, we have our condenser coil. Uh, this one's a little unusual. It's got this V shape to it. A lot of times, they just have a wraparound coil. But this one has a V shape in order to get more surface area to make it more efficient in a given footprint, right? So that's our condenser coil. Uh, so there's airflow on that side and that side, and on top we have the two condenser fans where airflow will discharge up. So it sucks air in the bottom of this through the V and on the outside and discharges the air up through the system. So that's the condenser coil side of the equation. Let's move over here. This is our filter section. So airflow is coming through this way, going through the filter, through the evaporator coil, to the fan and then discharging down into the heater exchanger section and then into the actual roof assembly. All right, so this is the way we access our filters. They slide in and out. So we can change those guys rather quickly. And yes, you need to change your filters. I'm sure someone will comment on the video about filter changing. 
So next section we have here on this particular unit is both our control section and our compressor section. Sometimes the compressors are located outside, external to the enclosure. In this case, they're internal to the enclosure. So in this case, we have DDC controls, direct digital controls. That is not common. That's just something we happen to have on this unit because it's a pretty high end, high efficiency unit. But a lot of times you won't have that interface on there. You will have a strip like this on there that all your thermostat wires come into. And once again, if you're not familiar with how to wire a thermostat, take a look at our videos on that, that subject matter. But the thermostat wires come in here. They go into, in this case, into the control circuit board and then control the unit. Um, we have two compressors on here. It's a dual circuited unit. So we have two compressors. That's why we have the two TXVs and the two evaporator coils, two condenser coils, two of everything on here. So we have two separate circuits that are independent of each other on this particular unit. You're gonna find the wiring diagram on all the units somewhere. It's on there. It's usually on the inside of a door. Uh, it may or may not be beaten to heck by the guy before you, just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, but you should have the ability to find the wiring diagram. Usually you'll get two views. You'll get kind of a, a ladder diagram and you'll get a traditional diagram for most of the, the units themselves. But you'll find that typically on the inside door of wherever the, the uh, electrical section is at. As we step around the other side of the unit over here, uh, we have a disconnect built into this unit. Sometimes you'll have an external disconnect. We happen to have one built in in this case. Right? We also happen to have a convenience outlet, which is nice. If you're the one ordering the rooftop unit, order the convenience outlet. It's great for power tools and for your, your technicians when they're on the roof. Uh, and if this unit shut down like it is now, I can run an extension cord from another unit at his convenience outlet. This is our economizer intake hood. Uh, we have an entire video on economizers. Actually, we have four videos on economizers. You're more than welcome to take those out and understand how the economizer works. But that's where all my fresh air comes in, either for ventilation purposes or for free cooling purposes if it's a nice day. Today is not a nice day. It's like 85 degrees out and it's even hotter on the roof. So not a nice day. The economizer blades are shut down. Down below that, in this case, we have our power exhaust. So if I'm sucking air into the rooftop and into the building, somewhere else the air's gotta be leaving. This is where it's leaving. Sometimes we'll have a barometric damper. In this particular case, we have a power exhaust. We have two fans on here, which are really hard to kind of see at this point. We have two fans that'll blow air out. So the more air I suck in, the more air I gotta take back out of the building. Right. That's how that guy works. The back side of the unit, we don't have as much access as we have on the front side of the unit. Right? Everything here is nut driver driven, but this is stuff we don't need to access very frequently. Right? So we had access to the compressors, fan, coils, filters and all the good stuff if I needed the back end back end access I'd have to do a little more work to open those up all right our condenser our evaporator coil excuse me all the condensate coming off of that has to leave the unit and drain away uh, on a rooftop unit we just drain it onto the roof these things are typically only running cooling in the spring uh, summer and fall we don't run cooling in the winter typically because in the winter we run an economizer so I only have a, con a condensate when it's not freeze conditions, so it's totally fine. There's nothing to worry about in terms of freezing up here. And that pretty much sums up uh, the rooftop unit here. Well, as you can see, a package rooftop is really nothing more than a furnace, an air conditioner, and a condomizer, all jammed into one box. Uh, and if you need help on any of those things, as you probably know, we have videos on furnaces, air conditioners, and economizers. So you take a little bit deeper dive than any of those. But until then, we'll see you next time.